Good evening. Welcome to the City of Laconia Conservation Commission meeting for May 4th, 2022. We're going to start off by uh, roll call. I'm Dean Anson. Deb Williams. Bob Harrington. Mike Foote. Okay, we have a quorum, so that's good. And so now we're going to salute the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay, so. Okay, so we start off with the minutes from the April 20th, 22 meeting. Anybody have any comments on those? Anybody want to make a motion? Motion to accept. Second. Anybody have any comments? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank Good. you, Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. That represents what we did. So, uh, okay. So, under old business, the commission membership that we talked about last meeting. Kelly, you want to tell us what you found out? Yeah, so I uh, reached out to um, Harrison first before I did anything with Marley, just to see what he needed for the commission he's interested in staying with the committee, and he gave me a simple designation to open up a spot. So um, we don't have to do anything further with that. We now have the spot open for a new member who I believe is interviewing And that's with that new setup they have for with interviewing. This subcommittee, right. yeah. yeah. So. Okay. And who's on that subcommittee? Is that all a part of city council? Yeah, it's council members, but I'm not sure who exactly is on the right. committee. Oh, so you don't have to go before the big committee anymore? No, so because people, once again, are nervous to stand up and speak and do. Right. So they made it a little more closed door. A little less intimidating for them. That's good. Yeah, I think, that's, I think it might be true for a council member. Okay. Good. That's good. Maybe that'll draw more people. Okay. <laughs> Don't shake your head. Not everybody likes to be <laughs> king of the party. <laughs> no, not even that. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So, do we have to do anything in writing, or does he have to give us? Great. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Uh, the next under new business is the master plan goals three through five. We were going to review tonight and make comments on so that we can see if we can finalize this. Okay. So goal three is investigate and prioritize parcels for conservation land easement acquisitions. Anybody have any comments on the actions listed under that? I no, I think that says it, but in the end, and you can save it for later, I'd like to point out a piece while we're talking there, but I'll save that for later. A piece of land for conservation easement? Yep. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, I thought maybe that we could add um, another focus to it just to educate the public on conservation easements, maybe with articles in the paper we talked about putting more in the paper, but um, just to have people think about it and know that it's an option. Activities that are allowed in 
or probably every you know all of it yeah and advantages to the landowner advantage to the community right education i'm always about that education bob you had an easement on your property have well not my property any longer well, i know that but yeah. but do you have any comments about how you thought that the city handled it or did well, you have people uh, seemed to go very smoothly and uh, uh because the first few uh, years of walkthroughs was to you and Scott, <laughs> mostly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't recall that there was any particular comments so on any of the walkthroughs. So. And you didn't have people who just came? The, the, well, the only thing that we had, of course, the... the uh, uh, City uh, uh, solicitor uh, re required that there be no motorized access to it, which wasn't in our uh, uh, thought, but uh, the, I guess city liability was. And we did occasionally have uh, some encroachment uh, on, on that uh, snowmobile primarily, and basically it was the neighbor uh, 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 there in the, in the barrel house. Yeah. Because okay. he had originally, before the easement was, was transacted, he'd asked for, for permission to run up to cross over into the uh, adjacent property to get to the uh, 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 power line. Yeah, okay. And of course, the power lines, the uh, the uh, um, road was the, the, the tra trails through that for snowmobiles and so forth s still stayed in place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he he just but he asked permission to go across your property first. But yes. Yeah. Okay. The, well, no, not after the the easement. He was just sort of trading on the permission that I gave him back before the easement. <laughs> so. <laughs> but uh, uh, Scott didn't seem to think that that was, <laughs> that was any major problem. Okay. So, Mike, have you had any experience with Are people you know that have easements on their property that have complained about? I would say what I do notice now with the influx of new people. And most everybody is from somewhere else now. And there's a lot of it. Is I have a lot more pressures for people wanting to dog walk and stuff like that. But <clears throat> I keep a pretty firm balance on access. You know what I mean? But that's just my personal way of being. Otherwise, I've seen it get right out of control. You know, you in for a dollar, you know, all of a sudden it's everybody everywhere. So, <clears throat> on these things, once you do have the easement, and once you have stated what it is that you're trying to create here, yeah, and what the goal is, then it may bring into alignment the goals of preserving the property, allowing public access, and uh, being a benefit to the actual landowner itself. You know, it takes some uh, n negotiation and some uh, lawyering to get into an easement. Yeah. You know, and that's usually laid at the feet of the landowner. Yeah. And so, in some ways, which we've encountered before, it, it can slow down, you know, what it is you're looking for. So I think that the pieces that would be looked to be preserved would, the goals of the people looking to preserve, it's one thing to say, yeah, I want, I want it to be there forever. But once you recognize the fact that all of a sudden you're swarmed with people without control, then it becomes more problematic. Do you think we should have signage 
on that says these are the activities that are allowed on your property or your property was maybe a well, different easement? The, this, the state of New Hampshire will tell you ain't posted, ain't private. I will tell you if I'm out walking the dogs with my wife's daughters and I'm deep into the woods and I come across someone with a rifle, I'm going to be having a firm conversation. Because we do, I get so much access just within my family and the trails and everything I've been working on. I, I can actually feel it in the woods when there's more people in the woods. But do you think a sign would be beneficial? Depends upon what level of liability you're going for. Are you inviting them on? We, we remember um, an incident a few years back where there was a landowner who had given a neighbor permission to hunt coyotes on the property. And in it, there was an incident and something, somebody was hurt and was it the landowner's liability or if the coyotes were enough of a, a problem and the landowner was willing to trade or money or something, then that becomes liability. You know what I mean? So what is it when, if it ain't posted, it ain't private, and you run your mountain bike down it, don't get hurt, but then if you were to charge access for trails, maintain trails and stuff like that, the uh, management or ownership of the property starts to take on the cloak of liability. Okay. So yeah. in, in us and ourselves, like Pickle Pond, right, go down, have a, put your toes in the mud and check out the peepers, catch a pickle, launch your kayak, whatever. The city's not charging it. We own the property. It's covered anything trip and fall or poke their eye out with a stick, it's covered by the city. So when it gets to these uh, conservation easements, you kind of have to write into them what it is that you're allowing and, you know. Well, that's, that's what I was, I was thinking that if, if we had a sign on Foote's property that said, these are the things you're allowed to do on this property. Walk by. Versus, versus, is, versus is Harrington's. Posted? What's that? Is your property posted? No, I'm not going post. I got 1,500 feet of in the woods stuff. I'm not doing it, but I do speak to everybody, including the neighborhood who walks the dogs. So and they don't have a doggy bag, you know, and so they're walking right into the top of the stream. So I got 47 houses in Beaver Pond Estates. And, you know, once you say, oh, sure, walk your dog. So why don't you want to post it? Because yeah. I'm walking the line between ain't posted, ain't private, um, current use, and then um, actually creating the easement. It becomes easier once you create the easement and you put into it what you are allowing or how are you going to do it. And but that's if what it's not posted, if, yeah, if there isn't, a sign or something that explains it, then... No, I, I just have the front gates say go away. But I've been up mowing in the back field. I was going to say, you, yeah, you've got such a, a large and, and I've perimeter. found people, I've found people, a couple <clears> came <throat> up, and they were probably out of Beaver Pond or whatever, you know, and they wanted to see if they could walk all the way through to Hilliard. And I was like... You know where you're going? Am I going to have to sound out a rescue team? <laughs> and they were no, they lived there before. So I personally didn't feel offended by someone strolling along. When I come home from work or something and I've put in my 10 hours and there's someone fishing in my pond in the sunset, yeah, I feel differently about it. What, so, okay. So, but the pond is a private pond because there's no entrances or. You can't put a canoe in, it's owned all the way around. But I was thinking that if, if on your property you wanted to allow people to hike, so 
what can you do on this property? The sign would say, what can you do on this property? Hike. In the end, carry I'll have, in, the, carry in out. The end, I'll have the easement, and this is really how I'm constructing this. I'll have the easement. I will rent access, my a lease, control of access to my business out front. Someone wants to come in and mountain bike, ski, glamp, you know, maybe have 10 nice lean-tos out with <laughs> lookoffs and stuff like that. Then you come in and pay through the front gate. The business takes on the local liability, and there's an umbrella liability for the property itself. The easement is what protects it. In that, you're not you, you're following all best management practices. You're not going to build within 75 feet of the rivers. Who wants to do that, anyways? You know what I mean. But certainly, there's an opportunity to alleviate the much-needed housing problem here in Laconia by just building a lot of houses. And that's not really where I want it to be. That's not what my thought process is. And I've been resistant to it for some time now. But these things come and go. Yeah. You look at a, a commercial piece of property, and this, you know, the, the all becomes your decisions and stuff like that. Look at a commercial piece of property over in uh, Guilford, which is currently undergoing uh, a cleanup and a major renovation and so, set of uh, little tourist cabins that have been there forever, right above Black Brook. Lisa could tell us more about it because she owns it. Her brother does, but yeah. Or whatever, yeah. you know. Certainly, it's, that's a change. That's right in commercial. Boy, if they put up. Guilford, so there's no zoning <laughs> for us there. But you know, if they were to put up 150 units, who knows what it's going to be? You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be scary, but it is commercial. It's scary, and that, and that would years. and that would render a paycheck for someone to live right. comfortably. Yeah. After, but after a lot of work, so I think it's unique to every piece of property. I have one here and I've been trying to do it. I can't get it on my phone and I'm not going to be able to get it right here. And I didn't write the number down today. But as we were talking about conservation the other day, you're looking for a long contiguous piece that probably already has current use on it. And so this one piece that runs between Pleasant Street School and Blueberry Lane is a series of wet areas, but certainly the kids on a bike path through the forest down to school, either at um, Pleasant Street or over to the junior high, be a lot more fun than running down the uh, road. I think there are paths back there. But, you know, to, if I were to, right, I was trying to find it here so I could actually speak on it reasonably. But if I were to target something after we've been looking at this stuff, that would be one of the ones that, and I don't know how to do it, right? Do you call them up and say, you're interested in it? We have some people who call and say, hey, I'd like to do this, but it depends upon what they know or how long they own it or what their goals are out of it. Is that, I thought that was city owned. There is some city in there. City? Yeah, anecdotal. And some private? But it's a private, it's a private, piece 13.5 acres but this is the area this is in the area we were talking with the lady called but it's north of it yeah and yeah. she's not connected to it yeah she's not connected to it right yeah. but the, but as we were looking at that this is a piece that stood out to me they're not going to build houses in there yeah. you can't it's too tight there's no access or open or stuff like that they and it's wet I, and I haven't been able to pull up the, on the phone how long they've owned it or mm -hmm. this or that or what it's being taxed on but um, okay and right. then and then you can say bike path you know it's city of Laconia you can ski on it you can't run your snowmobile down it you can snowshoe you can unmotorized recreate until you get to the motorized bicycle <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't say that. They've got them all over the city. No, <laughs> I'm not making it up. It's you hear a lot of you hear hands. a lot of 
debate in Vermont and New Hampshire on powered bikes. You know, is it a is it a motorized vehicle? Is it a it's a menace. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so you have it, Taylor. Yeah. So, um, it's a it's directly north of uh, the Pleasant Street School, right behind. Looking at that map. Oh, there you go, and that's what made the corridor there for me. So the city owns it already, and it makes a connection all the way down to the Pleasant Street School. So our kids from up at the end of that property, do they go to Pleasant yes. Street School? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so you would be... There's, yeah, there's already paths from... Um, uh, if you go, mm. if you go back by Shore Drive, that the road that is back behind there, there are paths through there. So like, a, the kids can leave Pleasant Street School and go through the woods to get to Shore Drive, that yeah. way. Because the Pleasant Street School piece of property is a fairly decent size yeah, that's piece of property. That's owned by the school district. Is that how it's structured here in city. Laconia? It's actually owned by the city. city. Actually owned by the city also. Okay. All right. So let's just let's go back to goal three. And is there any are there any changes we want to make there? I'll go with the the uh, the uh, suggestion that Deb had about uh, education and being able to speak on some of these things. Yeah, back on our our easement is a very different situation. Uh, there wasn't really what you call a magnet for people to come in uh, and no uh, obvious easy access so the, the only uh, uh, regular usage that we'd, we'd see would be uh, hunters during the hunting season right so. but one of the uh, thing I don't know it may be a bit unusual in the, in the uh, uh, easement uh, world but the terms of, the, of that easement uh, were written very uh, favorably to agricultural use. So uh, the, the, the current owners up there uh, could do anything associated, basically associated with agriculture, and that would be uh, allowable under the easement, e including, for example, possibly putting up uh, workforce housing something like that, uh, that that might uh, cause a little uh, gulping at the city level, but under the terms of the easement, as I recall, something like that would even be allowed, as long as it was agricultural, uh, direct agricultural use. So that's probably an anomaly in the, in the conservation uh, world a bit. Yeah, that would, okay. So and maybe what we do is we write an article to the paper that says, here are the different types of easements that we have, not necessarily identify them on a map, but to describe, we have these conservation easements that do, <coughs> that have um, allowed the following types of activities, and this is the benefit of having an easement, there's a tax benefit, and you know we are maintaining open space. And in some cases, the public is allowed to get access. They have to get permission first, but okay. just so that you know, so we we make people aware that we have these types of easements yeah. and what the values are. You're talking about the Daily Sun? Yeah. Okay, good. I think another 
article for the Daily Sun would be uh, what Patrick is doing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we have plenty of topics. We could definitely do at least bi-weekly, if not weekly, almost. Mm. We could do invasive species. We could do milfoil. We could, you know. And uh, another option possibly could be, um, you know, I'm, I'm work reworking a lot of the website, trying to, it's a slow process, but I'm trying to clean it up and organize stuff. We could do a Conservation Commission newsletter and maybe link that and you could make a link yeah. as well. So it's on our page. Yeah. You can access it anytime, but we also could regularly advertise. Yeah. And that, that's an option as well. Yeah. I mean, I think the paper is the best mm -hmm. source because there's still a lot of people that don't regularly use the computer for that kind of thing. Whereas if they're, for, you know, looking through the paper and see something, they might actually stop. You know, so this piece of property here is valued and taxed at $10,100 for 13 acres. I mean, that's why the outreach for that, being as you already that's own it, both sides of it, yeah. could, uh, that's why I target it. I mean, I can, I can draft a letter and just send it certified to the people on file and see, say, if you're interested, we'd love to chat about it. Sure. And it'd be nice to take a walk if there's already trails out there, because sometimes when I look here, I see different walking trails, so I don't know them. Right. Right. And I know that we do have trail section in our uh, in our website, in the city of Laconia website. But so in that, you know, maybe an opportunity to formalize some of the trails. So maybe what we do, is, I mean, I know of two others that would be candidates to send such a letter to okay. without, you know, without identifying them in public right now. And we can, mm -hmm. when we get to that, when we get to that, that point that maybe what we do is we go into non-public session and we discuss it so that, yeah. Is there any, any kind of letter on file that we already have? I think I have seen one. It might have been sent okay. like three or four conservation texts prior. Right. But I can review that and if it yeah, or, you know. I was gonna say, don't recreate the wheel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I think these this uh, piece here isn't two hundred and fifty or five hundred thousand. If you can stay out of that, you know, and it's trust. Right. They'll have to deal with it later, anyways. Okay, so under goal three, the only other option we would add is um, education. Education. Okay. All right, so what about goal four? Continue to foster partnerships between the city and local organizations, regional planning groups, and neighboring communities. Oh, wait a minute, before we do that, I want to go back to uh, goal three because the Winnesquam Watershed Network, uh, the Winnesquam Watershed Management Plan um, is going to be made public and one of the, I haven't seen the plan, but one of the goals of that plan um, was to identify lands that could be acquired. Okay. So when, um, and there is a date for airing that plan and I, I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, but I'll send it to you, Taylor, and then you can disperse it to everybody. So acquired by fee or by easement, or, or um, either. Either or, probably. Yeah, I don't. I don't know because I haven't seen the report. Yeah, but yeah. you know, it'd be, it would be. My understanding is targeting lands that could be acquired for conser conservation purposes. For purposes, yeah, yeah. Not necessarily buying them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Having, yeah. doing exactly what Mike was talking about yeah. with the. general anybody okay. uh, I don't think the concert um, I, I know that the the network does not have the funds to do the acquisition mm -hmm. so and that's kind of under four also number three we talk about supporting watershed networks 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to four now. Let's do four. Do you have any comments, Bob? Oh, you on on goal four. Goal four. Well, uh, one of the uh, uh, organizations that would fit under this is Taylor Community. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and our uh, small uh, environmental stewardship committee met the other, just the other day. And the thing that's sticking in our craw is there, there, uh, there is quite a lot of interest, particularly among the one members of that committee, but others also, in having the campus be more ecologic, ecologically <laughs> uh, um, friendly or viable. Uh, and most of the... Uh, uh, overtures to the uh, upper echelon to the powers that be and the management uh, just reach a black blank wall pretty much and we were trying to figure out how to try to uh, get the two back together again uh, and uh, it's, it's it's posing we've, we've got some uh, uh, one of the things we're going to try out to see if we can get to s sit down and talk with uh, some of the management there and uh, uh, they did uh, reach out to one of the uh, uh, neighborhood organizations there at Bois Circle because folks had been upset because of the trees that were cut back along so they finally uh, came in and uh, gave us a, a, an overview of, uh, their, they said they're finished cutting, and the, uh, uh, and that was mostly focused on, uh, largely on, on the um, uh, uh, dead and diseased trees, and that they do have plans for replanting. Uh, they didn't give any detail, but they said they, they would let the, the uh, uh, um, residents know <coughs> the list of the, thing, the what they have, uh, the, what they're working from, of, uh, they call them native plants, and uh, presumably they said the, the uh, uh, landowner uh, that's going to have a, a tree replaced would have a chance to decide among that list mm -hmm. what they would like to see. Oh, that sort good. of thing. So That's that good. was a positive thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah. other areas are just uh, well. One of the statements made there was the focus was uh, to grow grass, <laughs> <laughs> and it does seem, uh, and the main focus in the campus is either grass or pavement. That's basically it. So um, d does. Is there significant amount of land, whatever that means, a few acres, of the Taylor property that is either not in an easement already, but is undeveloped, that we could we could ask them to come in and talk to us about, you yeah, know, putting uh, I in. Don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, I'd have to have to research the uh, uh, scope of that easement. I uh, mentioned that. Uh, at the meeting, and John Ford came up. He said that while well, the location of that is, uh, you know, where Bois Circle is, he said that uh, where where the tower is. Yeah. Okay. That he said it was was downhill from that, uh, 
that's where the conservation is. That's what he said. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah, okay. mountain goat country. Uh, I had, had got the idea that there might be a conservation easement over beyond the new Volpe Way, but uh, that's different location. But there is a fair amount of property there that uh, at least could could have uh, be uh, uh, studied by a forester and and put into a tree farm system but that would as make a managed sense. forest. But uh, that that's not hadn't been done. I don't know if that would be any scope. There is a small trail system that the uh, residents have made. Uh, and whether there's scope for a larger trail system, it'd be hard to say. It's pretty rough territory there. But, yeah. but I've been wondering in, in the, uh, uh, the first bullet here of uh, issue meetings, uh, what we were talking about is a way we could find out how much interest there is amongst the residents in uh, uh, conservation matters, so that uh, we, we, we get a feeling that it's not just the eight of us around the table that are making the noise, it's, it's a good major part of the uh, uh, residents there. I, I wonder if, um, my thinking was that if we had a meeting with the management of Taylor Community, and talk to them about having pollinator gardens, um, maybe some adopt -a spots. You know, the city has adopt -a spots, and see if there are some adopt uh, areas where, uh, particularly the one that you've talked about before, which is the area where you think there should be a rain garden. You know, what's and they they mow it. Yeah, and it's behind a not a fence. You know where? Oh, the well, the the uh, you talk, talking about the uh, impoundment areas for uh, water, uh, groundwater runoff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, basically, yeah. Uh, and and uh, I don't know whether it would be amenable to that. We were thinking, well, uh, just for a starter, we could could put in something like uh, winterberry in there, mm -hmm. something like that. But but, but that was be the first. Thing that would pop up would those be those two mm -hmm. those two areas, whether there are other uh, possible adopt a spot areas around the campus, most of them would probably be encroaching on them mowing. Right, and, and so what I'm what my thinking is that rather than mow this area, yeah. there are a group of residents who are willing to yeah. adopt that spot and maintain a garden there. Uh, well, maybe maybe one of the first steps might be uh, see the uh, uh, month on a monthly basis. Now that we're out of COVID, uh, in fact, we had one this morning the, the men's breakfast, uh, and we have a speaker come in. This morning's speaker was the su super uh, from the water department, explaining how the water department works. Good, perfect. Uh, is there some someone uh, within? Our uh, group here, or, or within the the uh, uh, staff, that could give us a uh, forty-five to an hour uh, talk about uh, the possibilities for uh, uh, for conservation. And I think that the answer to that is yes, and I think that maybe the way to do it is kind of like what we were talking about with newspaper articles is have a conversation about the work that uh, we're doing with um, stormwater runoff. Yeah. You know, what are the findings? Um, we have conservation easements. What can you do there? We have adoptive spots where, so we, we could explain that, you know, here are the things that are going on in the city so that, you know, yeah. Yeah. you're aware of them. Yeah. And uh, maybe we could get some people who are willing to come and volunteer to do, yeah. like one of the things that we did for Earth Day is the middle school went out and cleaned up 
they or PG them. Park. Yeah. And when they got done, a combination of what the middle school students did and Parks and Rec did, I mean, it, it's, it's still clean. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, relatively <laughs> speaking. But, but uh, yeah, but something like that uh, would be a presentation to a, uh, well, then depending on the subject, uh, we can have up, up to uh, uh, 30 or 40 men at the breakfast. Uh, so it, it reaches a much larger audience than just the eight we had around the table. Right, right. And something like that also uh, might get the attention of the management and get a reaction one way or another <laughs> from, from there. I mean, certainly my personal opinion is I don't, I don't have a, well, I do have a lawn. I, I mow it a couple of times a year. Yeah because I want wildflowers to grow there. Yeah. And they're, they're coming in, just not fast enough. You know, I'm really not patient, so. Um, but it, you know, that might be, you know, yeah. Yeah. Philosophic, right now, philosophically, for, yeah, this for, is a where. For that group, a uh, little, little bit later in the season when the things are uh, leave, uh, leaved out and there, there are more uh, flowers around, uh, the group is going to, uh, We'll, we'll go up to uh, Prescott Farm, and uh, it would probably initially just uh, uh, gather around Ursula Allen's mm -hmm, little mm -hmm. pocket there, and and look at in uh, in our uh, native species there, because m uh, I'm an anomaly really in that group. Most of them are imported from other places like uh, uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Georgia, <laughs> they don't know from <laughs> exactly, you know, exactly. Uh, what native species are here in, in New Hampshire. So that's the first step for us. And, and they're and interested in okay. going toward native uh, plantings. And, and to also do what Deb was talking about with invasive species. Here are the invasive species that we are wrestling with in this area. Don't yeah, bring yeah. any more in. Well, they're, fair, <laughs> they're aware of them. Uh, John Ford was... was his his uh, 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 pet peeve is is the uh, Japanese knotweed. There are a couple of uh, places. There isn't a lot of it around, but there are some places. Mm -hmm. uh, there's more uh, bittersweet around than there is knotweed. Uh, right. <laughs> but, but yeah, and 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 bittersweet and autumn olive and you know so yeah. We there's a little olive, no, not much. Yeah, that I've noticed. But that's yeah. so tenacious, anyway. And anyway, that's <laughs> that's a one possibility to try to to get some uh, education to a larger uh, uh, sector mm -hmm. there. S so, do you want to talk to somebody and say that you know somebody from the conservation okay, yeah, commission I'll, uh, or the, uh, in the planning department uh, will? Well, uh, for the uh, men's breakfast. Uh, I'll check with uh, uh, John Larson. He's the one that uh, uh, organizes it. Okay. Whether he's the one that chooses the uh, programs, I'll have to find out or how that's done and then uh, see what his reaction is. Okay. He's not part of that <laughs> inner group, so I'm not, I may get a, get a, a different reaction from him, but we'll see. Okay. Some, some, another resource there is UNH speaking for wildlife. Those guys have a series of um, lectures and they train their coverage program for people to come out and present. Yeah. And so I think that's a, that's a great idea. They have a set uh, presentation for a variety of topics, either pollinators or this or that, yeah. and it's all training from UNH and then they come out and Speak to yeah. your group, and, and, the, and you get that by requesting it. There is some scope, some scope at least, for uh, individual residents to uh, uh, do something uh, it in their own backyard. Uh, uh, for example, mine uh, uh, backs up onto a s small wooded area, and I'm uh, uh, thinking about 
getting some uh, understory plants, like, like uh, alternate leaf dogwood, a few things like that to plant in under those tr trees that uh, will uh, uh, give some variety and have uh, uh, flowers and seeds, things Good. like that. Good. And others could do that too, yeah. to a certain extent, if they have, if they back up on wooded areas. Uh, they can't really do it on the grass. Uh, <laughs> in in the areas that are mowed, uh, I don't. Have, have you been through uh, Taylor recently along Ledges Drive? Uh, no. But anyway, John Ford's place is just, is is just a showcase. He's got he's got color all over his yeah. his lawn, and I asked him about if, if there was a problem with that, and he said, well, early on, what he did was, and I probably was at the lower level of the maintenance crews, said, we'll take care of this area. You don't worry about it. <laughs> and do your mowing elsewhere. And that's, what, that's the way he was able to do it. <laughs> okay. All right. But um, if, you, if you could get us a date that we could okay. come, yeah. um, you know, we'll, I'll work around it. I don't know. Taylor can. It's a men's breakfast. They probably don't want us women. You know what? <laughs> Who's to anyway. define, Deb? Who's to define? Really? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll see what I can find. Okay, I just don't all right. That Thanks. name just... <laughs> okay, so anything else on, on goal four? Sorry. <laughs> I forget that the mic is on. Anything else on goal four? Mm -mm. No, I think that's good. Okay, so like goal five, reduce the environmental impacts of development within the city. I had an, an addition on number three hmm? where it says investigate opportunities for wildlife habitat restoration in the city, such as fish, pas fish passage in Pickwell Pond, Cove. Um, I thought we could add uh, pollinate, pollinated gardens. In Pickwell Cove, where, where, where do we know? Bottom of Hilliard Road where the... Oh, where the, where, oh, where the, the pipes are four feet off the, you know, right. waiting for the flood to come. And if that were redone, there would be less. But th there are, isn't there pipes down at the bottom too? Once again, if it were redone in the proper manner. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I lost my head. <clears throat> okay. That's a, those are the same pipes that they take the big log and shove through to knock the beaver stuff out of it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And then, Oh, and maybe just more, and I feel like it's in another one, but maybe I missed it, but just more public information signs yeah. for any of our, you know, like even on the WOW Trail, you know, this is bittersweet. It grows every year. Yeah. Don't plant it in your yard. <laughs> Actually, they're, they're um, looking at expanding the river walk right now. Huh? Could be a um, a new line item in our um, budget. Like a signage or you know, just an ad for one of the things. Yeah. Okay. So, where do they want to expand the river walk? Um, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. Um, Rob's is dealing with that one. It's through one of the cliffs, I believe. Um, Must be going north I, I or so. up river. I don't yeah. know what. Direction that which, which the expansion of the wild trail or river walk, river, river walk, because yeah. it, it now uh, is developed from from the main street bridge up to uh, Church Street, mm -hmm. yeah. and they say that it goes down the other side, but not much has been developed on it. Uh, they're down towards the cemetery there. But Oh, down near, up near the cemetery across from Shaw's, or the cemetery down near Durkee Brook, where that, where yeah, the well, party lounge is. Uh, the one that's uh, uh, 
Hmm. You go, uh, you go uh, downstream from uh, the a area behind the, uh, 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 the, the ho hotel and the development there, and beyond those buildings, there was that that old what is it called, the uh, uh, Meredith Bridge Cemetery, or yeah, it, it's an old cemetery. Uh, but On that's the same side that's of the, the way the uh, River Walk people were thinking about extending that on that side of the river. Okay. So you'd really have uh, you couldn't you couldn't expand it down on the other side where it is yeah, well, because there's it's too supposedly many properties. It <coughs> uh, it's probably not really very usable, but supposedly there there is an easement for it to go in back of the. Uh, uh, the condos where, where was was the uh, 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 old car uh, uh, no. Roger, uh, uh, Alan Rogers. Alan Rogers, yeah, in back there, down down to uh, uh, to get back onto Water Street to uh, to to get to the, oh, uh, down the by other side of the so down by Fair Street. Down towards Fair Street, yeah. So through those but people's it's, it's yards, not, uh, yeah, it's that's not developed. pretty tight back there. I thought there w that was part of the river walk. Yeah, it is, but I don't know that it's used particularly. Doesn't it stop after Allen Rogers? I don't think it goes. I, I think you're right. I don't think it does. They're, they're all private residents. Yeah, private yeah. property. It would yeah, be nice yeah. if you, you could hook it up to the WOW trail at either end. Yeah. Because uh, it probably does meet the Rao Trail there uh, at uh, uh, where the railroad crosses uh, Fair Street, mm -hmm. Water Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it had to go back onto uh, Water Street because of the private residence there. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay, so if if you could get from Rob, yeah, I'll get just so we can, and and then. So if we're going to do that, you know, it would be nice to look at the land between the walk and the river and make sure it's not mowed grass. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, so anything else on, on five? So number four has notified contractors of environmentally sensitive resource located on or around their sites. Mm -hmm. Um did Dean look into anything about my suggestion of surrounding a construction site with silt fox? Um, so it's most likely something we could, well, I know we could add it to the general permit. That would have to go through the Urban Commission um, for those zoning general permits, I guess. That's true. With the code department. Mm. Mm -hmm. But um, we do have an erosion and sediment ordinance, which we could work on. I just I didn't know if he'd you know talk to anybody about it or not. No, but if if you have a concern about it, I'm sure it's something we can work on editing. And I mean, when they look look at the other side of it, where if it's going to keep silt yeah. out of the you know drainage system. Absolutely. Um, but even so, there's a site I live up near Guilford Line, and there's a a, a residence that had added a huge addition and they're up on a hill and it was all dirt and then the hill goes down to village west to the second village west or whatever its office is mm -hmm. and I and I just like looking at that you know they should have some kind of silt fox or silt protection because whenever it rains that's running right down there so, I mean, we're all in a watershed, you know, we're all in a bowl. So, unless your land is completely flat, it's going to run off somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be running off into the street or, you know, or into our lake.
because that, I mean, I don't know if you can work that into number four as far as if you're notifying them of environmentally sensitive resources. Maybe I could work it into number two on that. Um, the new version is going to contain messages from Park City promoting effective methods and regularly update city ordinance to these kinds of environmental concerns. Stormwater runoff mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, any, I mean, anywhere there okay. would be great. So just like what Bob said before, I'm not from here. So if, if I am a developer and I don't abide by your rules or ordinances, what's a penalty? violations we get to the lawyers and they take it from there um, you know they go through the court system and whatnot but from my understanding and once it's in the lawyer's hands it's usually like the first three or four years I mean they, oh, yeah. they just got finished the court case a couple months ago and that's not been here for like five or six years so it's not a quick process that's not gonna I don't know Because if, if somebody, not to interrupt you, but if no, someone okay. brings a plan to us or to even to the planning department and then doesn't follow that plan, like if they say they're going to leave trees on a steep slope and they cut them all. Yeah, I usually try and work with them on a remedy prior to anything court related and I typically think once the team gets involved in that, they are more apt to take his word and but I mean, do we have a set series of steps that we follow? Um, I send a violation letter. I get them three weeks to get in contact. If they don't respond, I do one or two weeks. And from that point on, the team calls or goes to the lawyer and that's mm -hmm. Is I mean, does he decide what the penalty should be? Or say if somebody, cut um, up, if they cut down all the trees that they said they were not going to, do they have to replant? Or yeah, so that could be one of the things, like, a, you know, if they agree to comply with, you know, a landscape plan of some type that addresses the issue. Or I, I believe it's a $270 fine per day that mm. it's not addressed. And that's usually enough of a threat to get people interested in fixing something. Um, but I don't know how often the city falls through with that. Right. But, but I'm thinking of that house near Governor's Island. Remember that they built up on top of that hill and that hill was all wooded? And, and they, they, were, they were not gonna cut all the trees. They came here and they said, we're only cutting the trees so we can build the garage underneath. And they stripped that whole hillside. So I, I guess, at what point do we start fining them? Does it have to go to the, court, to the lawyer first? Yeah. It's, you know, it's, um, I mean, do you it's know? frustrating. Absolutely. It's fr it is frustrating because, you know, my experience working with regulatory agencies is in the state of New York. In the state of New York, I mean, it really doesn't apply here, but in the state of New York, you would be cease and desist, take it back the way it was supposed to be, then come back and ask us for the same permit that we already issued, and we may or may not give you that. And if you don't do that, then we'll just, you know, whatever. So it's it's much more stringent than here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you think it probably provide us a lot more answers about the legal process than I can think of because I haven't gone through that right. yet? Anyway. All right, so we're still at five. Do we have any 
additional changes that we want to make. Okay. Not, not changes, but just for your information, the uh, Laconia Housing Authority is, because of the lack of, of housing, particularly affordable housing, is an active pro process of, of looking at possibilities for developing new new housing. And the first piece is already in process is it, uh, uh, is for the uh, open area th uh, there at Blue Blueberry Place, or what we call now Pearly Pond Townhouses, the first uh, cluster beyond the, uh, the, the Bean Center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's an open space in back that that uh, uh, we're looking to put uh, in some new new housing that would be affordable housing, but uh, we're also looking at other areas for housing developments, basically to the north of, of Blueberry Lane, uh, and see what possibilities there might be there. Uh, I don't really have a feel for how. Uh, environmentally conscious uh, our management team is, but uh, I can keep an eye on the things as, 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 uh, as we go forward uh, because it would be going into uh, undeveloped areas, uh, possibly up toward the, the state school. Uh, but it's all uh, dre dreaming right now, but, uh, but that's well, so seems Eugene to be the, the to area where where, yeah. where there is a potential for expanding and ideally it would be to put in a complex in that somewhere in that area that would be sort of a another uh, community nucleus sort of like Lakeport Bay of Pete mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that has housing amenities whatever so that would be the ideal as far as I can see so that okay. would be adjacent to the Belknap County uh, complex there. Uh, near the well, it would be it would home. be perhaps back in north. Uh, there's quite a lot of, uh, of, uh, of area there that uh, between uh, well beyond the industrial park and and going up toward the state school property. There's potential there. I don't know whether uh, there'd be anything to come of, of uh, searching out the possibilities, but we'll see. So it would be between Blueberry Lane and Lexington? Uh, mm, probably not. Let's see the I think there's a big wetland back there. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty uh, wet, I think. But. The, to be, um, the biggest piece is, is basically... Uh, uh, north of Lexington and uh, up toward the, the uh, state school property and, and down toward uh, uh, Shore Drive. Okay. That's part a big vacant area. It's, part of the park, it's, got some, it? it's got some challenges to it because it's uh, pretty rough territory in places. Where does O'Hearn? Just to the north of Primrose, the very top of Primrose, ends in Ahern. Okay. No other comments on gr on goal five. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. So we're done with that. Good, and if you could tell us when you're going to do that, we'll come to support you. Thanks, Taylor. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now we're up to um, DES permit applications, of which there were two um, that I signed. The first one was a repair and replace docking structures. Uh, both of them were that, and it was damage uh, during the winter when ice hit the, their, uh, whatever they, the pilings at the pilings, end. thank you, yeah, thank you. It was a big word. I hadn't gotten to the P's yet. <laughs> <laughs> Going alphabetically. <laughs> so anyway, so those were minor. 
they were replacement in kind, so it was just repairing the damage. Okay, other business. One of the things um, a lady called Lisa Morin to ask her if she knew where she could do planting of trees. And she was actually going to do the physical planting. She wasn't, I, my understanding is that she was not supplying the trees, she was just going to physically plant them, is that right? Yeah, I believe she was going to work with, um, I guess, called One Tree or... Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. They, it's a... I think it's a credit card, it, isn't yeah. it a credit card where you... Huh? Anyway, go ahead. No, it's, it's a group that works on deforesting areas and um, I think they were specifically looking for places that need it and she was interested in working with them to do something nearby. So I didn't know any off the top of my head of areas that we might want that in, but I haven't even called it to her yet, but I'm going to hang with her. What's up? <laughs> Taylor. Why not? Yeah, I, I miss, miss that entity. So it, it's, um, there's a lady who wants to plant trees. Yeah. And she's going to, she's going to get the trees, and she just wants to be, have a place to plant oh, them. Yeah. So based on what you said about Taylor community that saying we were going to, yeah, maybe that's a place that we could. Oh. Uh, if that were broke, uh, would to get permission from the uh, uh, management, I can pr pretty much guarantee you the answer to it. Nothing ventured, nothing lost. <laughs> yeah. What about over at the middle school? Um, that, that's city-owned property, right? Mm -hmm. I would say possibly. I mean, there was some old growth that they cut down. They cut down a lot of old pine trees when they put this new school in. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know how much they want there, but that's something that. Yeah, I, I don't know. But for, for ta at Taylor, maybe the thing might be for for her to approach the environmental committee and tell them what she has in mind and see if there's any uh, way to to. Uh, uh, maybe carry that forward. Do we know who who that person is? Hmm. Who wants to plant? Or yes. Yeah, well, um, I've got her name in an email. I can I can yeah. send that to you guys for phone records. So, so can can Taylor forward it to you, and yeah. then you get yeah. it to the yeah, well, person yeah, you we'll think is the that, best? The yeah. Re reason of asking that uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, well, actually, she's. She's the acting chair of that group. Uh, uh, her, one of her grandsons is in a, in a, I guess it's a Cub Scout group, and they were uh, uh, selling uh, seedling trees with a money raiser. <laughs> and she bought a bunch of them, and now she's got them uh, for us to hand out to us to plant places. Okay. <laughs> But it's it's balsam fir, basically. That's what it was. Um, a uh, a good spot would actually be around Opeachy. On any you know of the property that's not privately owned, I think I'm thinking about um, back behind uh, Dutile Oil Company, like that way over by the Wow Trail. There are some spots i mean it would be nice to get more shade do you think that's something should i direct her maybe to the opg preservation no because it would be i'm thinking city owned too like even up at the uh, state school along the edge there you've got a lot of old growth that's not going to be there forever mm -hmm. i mean we've lost some trees back behind the middle school um I'm just trying to think of, you know, shade for the for the lake for the edge there. I think I think along and between along. the the Wow Trail and the lake, they they went in there and there must have been a 
It must have been a combination of um, invasive species, invasive natural species, and invasive of you know, homeless people. Species. <laughs> and I, they went in and they cut everything down. So that would be a great place to put in, you know, some seedlings. Yeah, I'll talk to your team about yeah. if there's anything that we could do if they were to go back and have their yard left in a bit. Yeah. We, could, we could use some over at the Opeachy boat ramp too. Because we lost yeah. a few trees there. And there was a big chunk. Did you see that branch? Yeah. And the, um, I'm not entirely sure if we'd be able to. Because of Eversource. Yeah. But it's something we can throw out. But that bank needs stabilization badly. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure that the trees that she has would be the ones for this type of plant because they, right. uh, I'm pretty sure the only species is balsam fir. Okay. Okay. But, you yeah. know, maybe. In the forest in the back of your house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know. And maybe I don't know how many, how many she has. Yeah. Another would be up around uh, Robbie Mills on the out, you know, not on the inside of the fence, of course, but on the outside, uh, you know, along where they, they mow the lawn. That would be. And the house that's next to Pearly Pond that they're working on where the Pearly Oak is, I think they must be pretty close to the uh, buffer, the edge of the buffer. And they, I, I'll bet you, they have no idea that there's a buffer, that there's a, you know, a whatever. And I don't even, would we consider that a vernal pool or is that a pond? Uh, that was, I it's a pond. It's a pond, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. But there's, there's some streams that come in the back over on the, uh, being conference center side. So there is, is some inlet, a little, mm -hmm. not very big, but a little right. bit. Right, yeah. and it comes from that wetland area yeah. that is between there and um, Lexington. Lexington, yeah, right. Their, yeah. Just to reference, their property line is about 90 feet from the edge of the pond. So they are out of the buffer, but that's still a negative increment of buffer. But but they are doing work and they have a big pile of wood chips there. Lord knows what they're gonna do with them because they're putting in a lawn now. So maybe we ought to just alert them to the fact that there's a buffer maybe, here. Maybe they could have you a know, silt sock around their construction You don't know site. whether their property line <laughs> encroaches on the buffer? Uh, Taylor said it doesn't. No. It doesn't, okay. But but it certainly, you know, Deb's right. There should be a uh, uh, a silt socks along yeah. the pond side yeah. and along the streams in the back because in the back, I think they built a pool because they got a big fence that they put up. Yeah, we put that one. So. Yeah, just like an aerial thing. Okay. Okay, and so we're now at... Other business. Any other business? You, you know what? I just wanted to point. I looked at that stuff you sent from the four points. Mm -hmm. That stuff's great. Does it get shared with public works? Yeah. He, at uh, a point. Patrick has spoken to them. I don't know if he's like regularly updating them as he is us, but I'm anticipating that when we do a presentation with him that we're going to invite DPW. I, because I it. thought, you know, because having listened to Wes Anderson speak, you know, to the Master Plan Steering Committee and recognizing the infrastructure for dealing with the waters that come out like that, I thought that the information that was presented there um, dovetailed with that, and I wouldn't want that to be unnoticed. Yeah, I, I'd like does present to get as much exposure to different right groups in the city because it's it can apply to a lot of because I, I i see the value to it and i i was like and i'm excited about the next part that will be coming um i think we're meeting supposed to meet next week i believe now um with the erosive index to figure out what areas in the city would be of use for infrared erosion 
and learn it all in your head, but that will be really important. You look like you're ready to. No, I, I'm, I was thinking about something. Anyway, there was something else I wanted to bring up, but go ahead. Um, just to update Lake Coast information, there, once again, there is a training tomorrow night online if anybody's interested in volunteering to Lake Coast. That's from 6 to 8 with New Hampshire Lakes. You do have to register with them. Um, I sent an email to Alan Gothier because it's after May 1st. And hopefully he's back from Florida. Um, I just I asked him if we could meet as soon as possible or if they are going to have a lake association meeting to please let us know so that we can be there. Um, I want to make sure that he uh, knows that we're talking about doing um, more water quality testing on the lake and just to get everybody's um, ideas about that and if they would like to you know give us some money towards lake hosting I can't really we can't hire anybody to lake host until we know how much money we have mm -hmm. so the sooner the better for that um, and then New Hampshire Lakes Congress I think I told you guys it's June 2nd and 3rd mainly the 3rd um, and it's a fee. It's a fee to register. Do we have any uh, coffers for that? We used. They used we to. Do. We yeah, used we to, used to pay. Used to uh, pay. like from the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so. I think I just need some information, and I, um, I can tell you, I registered the other day, and it's seventy-five dollars for the Friday. Um, but when you register, you have to put the session that's that right. you want to go to so um, let me talk to Dean tomorrow and see if it's something it might be easiest if people register themselves and then we reimburse so I'll, I'll talk to him and see what the answer we, is I think we've done it both ways okay. yeah we have we have done so, it both ways but I know I'm interested in going I'm going anybody else Mike's gonna be You're busy. what's the date on it's a it? Friday And where is that? It's up in uh, that church by Mount Meredith. Oh, yeah. Oh. June 3rd? Mm -hmm. As far as I know, that's an open date. What Interesting. Did, what did you pick for your track? We've been to that before. Yeah. Right? Yeah. At Church Landing. Yeah. 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 So I chose um, watersheds and climate change. Um, I chose about lake advocacy with the state and the changes that yeah. are going on from the legislation and then how uh, community partners can work with municipalities on okay, cool. environmental things. I thought that was more good information. Right. So, um, What'd you sign up for? I didn't sign up yet, but I think there was a track. It was like the third track. I know, I know one of the programs was on the microplastics, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you find them everywhere now that you think about them? In our bloodstream. I mean, not even in that. They're just walking stream. around all the time. You know, if you get old and you bend over, you know. In our blood, they say that. The, 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 the water treatment facility cannot take those plastics out when they run the, the no lake water. No matter how fine, no matter how yeah. two micron. Right. Mm, so, interesting. are you interested in going to Lakes Congress? Uh, what's the date on June 3rd? June 3rd. 20, June 3rd? Yes. So you have to, you have to go to the lakes, uh, New Hampshire lakes. Dot org. Dot org. Dot org. And there's a list of, um, presentations. Yeah. And they're. Oh, no, no. I'll go check it out. Okay. New Hampshire lakes. All right. Dot org. Yeah, okay. Okay. So that's all I have. Good. For th well, for that. Okay. I was going to um, request if you have a landscape plan for those Apeche condominiums on Apeche Street. Mm, those two. Um, it's 
part of the site plan. I do have that. Um, I only have a paper copy. I don't have digital. So but I could next time we meet, maybe you could bring it. Okay. Um, I walked around the property the other day when no one was there, and it's pretty bad. You're on camera now. No, I mean, well, I'm just, I mean, right now they've got a berm so that things don't get down into the lake, but in the future, they're, you know, they're going to have to move that if they're going to have access to the lake, and the slope right between the two condominiums just goes right down to the lake, and there is a white drainage pipe that comes right out of the bank to the lake. Is it worth moving? Yes. And is it the foundation down? I'm not sure what it is, but... Okay. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll look at the plans. I think they have um, a basic landscaping plan part of it, but I'll see what they have. It would just be nice to know if they're going to do any kind of, you know, rain gardens or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and I, I know, I mean, I've worked with that contractor a little bit here and there um, as far as the city is sponsored, so if he was, that we've done some concerns about that, I think they'd be okay with, you know, maybe we can convince them to hydrate these earlier than they would want to do or something, so that would be cool. I think that could... Maybe we could invent, in, um, interest them in putting shrubs along the edge mm -hmm. of the property before it goes into the lake so that they don't mow, and okay. certainly when they mow, do not put the clippings into the lake it really, it, it really needs, because it is so steep, it, it needs some kind of um, rain garden or berm or something, more so than just even yeah, the shrubs. Yeah. That would be it better than, than blowing around the hill. Yeah. Plant. yeah. Um, and their, their porta potty might be a little out of compliance. Compliance, too. <laughs> oh, okay. It was, they had it right on the edge of the property, which as, was as far back as you could go, and now I've noticed they've moved it a little closer. Okay, I'll, so. uh, I'll double check on that. Yeah, it didn't, didn't do too hard for them to stay. So. I know, I think they moved it because they were working on the edge. Yeah, probably. So, yeah. Hmm. But there again, the dirt from the property is going into the street, oh. and it's would be nice if there was a cell block there. You yeah. think I own stock or something? <laughs> Maybe you should. Maybe I should open a company. <laughs> okay. Anybody have anything else? No. Okay. Do do we want to see if we can get communicate with Lydia Tucker? I do, but do we want? Well, I mean, do we want to say, hey, you know, would you be interested in being on the conservation commission while you're right when you're at home? We don't have any more spaces. I know, but right. Oh, so um, that's what I want. Would you contact Ruth after they do the interview and ask her if she wants to go to Lakes Congress, please? Because if, if her area of expertise or interest is climate change, you know, there are topics in there that would be right up her alley. And uh, just so, because I'll talk about this with Dean tomorrow, everyone here is interested in doing the Lakes Congress? Just mm -hmm. so I can tell them the number. Friday, in, Friday uh, on the 3rd of June? Okay. Sure. I'm not going to go on Friday. I don't think. I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. Well, there is a Thursday, a Thursday night presentation, oh, but it's not. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. It's not the. Not the what? It's not. I mean, you don't need to go to. Right, to right. Right. Where do they have the noshing? <laughs> okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning at 1030. just going over the, the stuff a little bit about like kind of filling in some gaps here and there 
and then we'll be all set to get started whenever we want. Um, one thing, I submitted the plan for what we anticipate for the lab analysis, and the costs were almost two grand, so we will need to reevaluate those for sure. Um, obviously, we'll do two free ones with the Soil Kill A and the chloride, um, but we might need to reconsider total cost with nitrogen and E. coli. Um, and that's something he said we can just talk about that tomorrow when the emergency stuff, because the other thing is um, I've spoken with Bob Craigcraft from UNH about the deep water testing. Um, so we, he's all set to set up a training. I just need to get some dates from the water department about when we could go, and I'm waiting for a response on that. Um, but we, one of my thoughts was we do test, I know it's different between tributaries and deep water, but we do test for total phosphorus in the lake in deep water, so maybe we can cut that out of the tributary testing for pogus because we'd be covering that base a little mm. bit. That might save us some money. Um, and I need to talk to Dean about the budget because we only have two to five hundred dollars mm. allotted for water quality testing next year, and that would not cover a lot. So who put together the budget? Okay, so talk to Dean, see what he suggests. I mean, I think, I think Scott would. I would hope that Scott would, um, you know, he would entertain mm -hmm. a conversation for sure. I know that. So, yeah. okay, good. Because the only thing about losing the phosphorus from <coughs> the tributaries is, been, if there's a problem, then you can see right where it's coming from. And you've been tracking it for a number of years. At least there's a baseline on it. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Anything else? Um, one other thing. Uh, so I've had some email communications with um, Joyce from Pleasant Street, which is the conservation discussion we talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, some of the neighbors are interested, some haven't gotten back to her about it. Um, I guess I'd like to know how would you like me to advise her going forward? Do we want to pursue just her property for now and go ahead with that? Or would you like to say, you know, once the neighborhood agrees, she's what property they're interested in this like for sure and come back to us? I think it's problematic in that you're dealing with a variety of landowners. And that's another option. Like right. I, I, I think it's problematic and you're, it, for the amount of effort that you'd put into that, I'd go for the one between Pleasant Street and, uh, and uh, Blueberry Lane. I just, I don't think she has enough. I understand it. I think it's a great idea. Plant some flowers and grow some bumblebees, but I just think that you're going to find under 10 acres, anything you talk about for conservation easements or conservation is generally 10 acres plus. Maybe I should suggest too, um, contacting UNH Extension about working with her on a colony of the garden. Like sure. Yard that yeah. Extract wildlife and take pictures. And that's a neighbor, that's a neighborhood scope, mm -hmm. right? You know, you don't want to flush it out and be mean about it, but some type of thing like that could be encouraging within the neighborhood. Or we could meet with them too. Sure. You know, we could definitely put together some kind of presentation or any, you know, her, you know, and she could invite her neighbors or we could send them a flyer yeah. Yeah, and say, this is what your neighbor's doing. We're gonna get together on this date. We're gonna give them some information about pollinator gardens and native plantings. Yeah. Are, are there any water bodies near there? The no. closest would be Willis Farm, which is not, which does not border. Okay, because I was thinking, you know, that there's a Lake Smart program mm -hmm. that New Hampshire Lakes has, and you know, New Hampshire Lakes maybe, maybe they would help out. Like, you know, this is what you can do to improve your <coughs> ecological. 
value of your property or whatever, but I don't know I, if they will, would do it if they. I, I don't. I don't know either. But um, didn't the city attorney say that we could not have that type of an easement? We, there is no such thing as a conservation easement that is temporary. It would have to be for perpetuity. Yeah. Right. I thought I thought you could have a conservation easement that afforded you a reduction in your taxes and if you decided that you wanted to take that easement off because you wanted to sell it and you wanted to develop it that you had to pay the back taxes we're not these people That's are not you're talking more current use right okay you, and so you pay a penalty it's not paying all the right the back taxes. You're paying a ten percent penalty on the yeah. current value of the land. Yeah, that's basically the system for current use. That's, that's what it is. is. That's what the yeah. you're talking there. So the easement. Yeah, I, as I recall, uh, there wasn't any change uh, in the assessment uh, when when the easement was uh, negotiated. Uh, because it was already in current use. Correct, and that's the way it usually goes. Yeah, yeah. And current use has to be a rate that increases. Correct. Well, ten acres at a minimum. Mm -hmm. And I believe on yeah. one property. Of course, there, yes. there, there are limitations in the current use, so uh, uh, there might be uh, more, s uh, uh, some easements might not fit within the parameters for uh, uh, current use assessment. I mean, we certainly want to encourage her and applaud her, yeah. you know, idea. Yeah, I'll so as a Laconia Conservation Commission, we should give her some help. Absolutely, yeah. I'll yeah. draft up the email to her and discuss it with her. See if there's anything we can do to get down there or something. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay, thank you. All right, anybody have anything else? Anybody want to make a motion for adjournment? Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. So the next meeting is the 18th.